there is a little Spider-Man car smelly thing that my son loves. He goes, spin it, Daddy, spin it. Anyhow, we are here in Salford, and uh, as I speak, the British, the BBC Philo Philharmonic Orchestra is playing Strauss and Handel and all sorts of things in Salford here, which is quite nice, because Salford isn't usually such a, a place of highbrow entertainment. But um, no, um, I feel a good surge. I feel happy. I've just uploaded my first video in two and a half years. And uh, right now, as I shoot this one, you, there's people that are watching that one, which is nice. I feel the energy. It's good. So that difficult first video is out. Anyway, Charlie Veach here. Today is Friday the 13th of uh, October. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And so it's a good day to talk about the first... Um, philosophical point that I'd like to discuss and in a way it's the kind of key it's the kind of doorway that to open you up to maybe thinking that we don't know everything we know very little there are many mysteries which uh, is the fountain is the source the profound mystery that uh, spawns all religions all spiritualities all ways of thinking all ideologies that try and think of a higher power and uh, without further ado let's just get into it there's a concept in philosophy of mind called infinite regress. And all that means if, you know, it just means infinite going back. And I think it's very important nowadays because we have so many people, so many atheists, people who define themselves by the lack of belief, atheism, it's very strange. I don't have the balls or the confidence to say for sure either way, but I know that uh, sometimes the truth can be defined as what is most functional. And it's an absolute biological, you know, you know, necessity of humans to try and think of a, a higher power. And, uh, you know, people try and deny that, but I think you're wrong. And so getting into it, infinite regress just means in the, in the concepts of philosophy of mind that, you know, say you, you are, you know, something's happening. There's some information processing happening. Or to give you an example, Elon Musk, as well as maybe people like Ray Kurzweil, Elon Musk is the rocket Jesus. He's the man that's going to take us to Mars and spinning underground and hyperloops and so forth. Um, he's also has a very good car company, Tesla, and he may be a very clever man. And in fact, you know, I use his products. I don't use Tesla. My car is not a Tesla. I use PayPal, which I think Elon Musk was one of the billionaire founders of that. And he believes that life is a simulation that everything around us is a simulation being simulated by very advanced beings from another dimension or whatever. But that, again, falls under the infinite regress problem because it begs the question, who is then simulating those simulators? And does it go back to an original source that, that isn't being simulated? I mean, he says that it's very unlikely that we're living in the original source. And I disagree 100%. I think this is the original you know, re reality. But uh, he says, nope, no, no, it's so much more likely that we're just on a microchip hurtling through space and uh, this is just being simulated. We are only kind of computer programs. But again, you can regress that backwards and say, well, okay, so who, who's simulating the original one? And this is why we come back to the idea of God or a higher power, because I believe your consciousness, the ability to subjectively experience the world, what philosophers call qualia, you know, the redness of red or the sorrowful, sorrowfulness of s sorrow or sadness or the great ecstatic joy of love. People can say, oh, it's just, uh, you know, I'll give you an example like, Thomas Metzinger, he's a, a kind of a writer. I don't know how he would like to be defined, but uh, I listened to two very strong podcasts on the Sam Harris Waking Up series podcasts. And the first one was from a philosopher called David Chalmers. He's got a very funny accent like myself. It's like half Australian, half Canadian. Um, I've run out of um, fractions now, but anyway, he sounds a bit Canadian, British, Aussie. And um, he is uh, very much the creator of the idea of a philosophical zombie, that uh, there is no need to have this rich internal experience for atoms to arrange themselves and be successful in the world. I mean, the, the philosophical zombie is a being exactly like myself right now, but there is nothing happening inside. It's literally just reacting to uh, stimuli from the outside world, from itself, things it has learned, and there is no redness of red, there is no beauty of love, there is no 
fundamental joy of appreciating the being which is all around you. It's just utterly dead. And one thing he said which was fascinating was, um, you know, if we create artificial intelligence, which you already have, your calculators and AI, it's just, you know, it can do problem solving a lot quicker than you can for mathematical calculations. But if we were to say, for example, develop true cy cybernetic androids, cyborgs, there is no evidence that they would actually have a rich internal emotional subjective experience inside them. They may just look like uh, they, they actually are experiencing things. And there's a great scene in the Johnny Depp film Transcendence, which I think is a bit of a shame that they've used the word transcendence because I don't think it means quite what the film wants you, wants you to think it means. And they develop an AI that's like this big, you know, computer like the kind of red dot from Space Odyssey, you know, it's conscious, it's, a, it's you know, it's sentient. And uh, Johnny Depp asks it, like, how do I prove that you're uh, actually there, that there's someone in there, that you're conscious? And the computer says, well, how do I prove that you're in there? And this takes us back to the absolute fundamental problem, is that you know that you're having a, a, a subjective, amazing experience of the being that's all around you, but no one else can prove, but it's pretty acceptable to assume that every human being has a subjective self inside them. And this is where religions get the idea of the soul from, that uh, you know there's something transcendental about um, consciousness, that it is evidence of a higher power, of something being very, very strange. Now, again, to not fall into dogma and for me to kind of rant here and say that I know the answers, I want to just say a few presuppositions and that, of course, there are so many things about this world that we don't know, that we don't understand. Um, nobody really understands quantum mechanics, quantum physics, um, you know, the particles coming in and out of existence for a trillionth of a second. No one understands why there's a universe rather than there not being a universe. Uh, Albert Einstein came up with a great concept. He says, well, the universe is just one of those things that happens from time to time. And, you know, the the universe is suspiciously young. I mean, 13.7 billion years. That's not a lot of zeros, Tony. And, um, you know, 13.7 billion, that's what, um, uh, the military budget of America for a week? You know, these numbers are not big. You know, if you were to throw around a few handfuls of sand and spent maybe an hour doing it, you'd have very quickly thrown 13.7 billion particles of sand, grains of sand. And so, let me just uh, let these people walk past because I do get quite shy because people do stare at you like you're a crazy person when you're filming yourself in a car but not maybe not so much now but five five six seven years ago when YouTube was fresh um, they were but again let's just get back to the fundamental issue here infinite regress um, I brought up Thomas Metzinger he is uh, one of these uh, the way I like to describe it, I didn't come up with this. Uh, was it Stanislav Graf, the, the LSD theorist? He says uh, people are God playing hide and seek with themselves. And I don't know if it's a, an emotional thing that people need to deny any higher power in order to feel comfortable, but I find it gives me great comfort to think that, you know, I know nothing, I know very little, and that there's this amazing world out there that if I act morally and if I do the decent, decent thing, uh, maybe good things will happen for me, and that's basic Christian scripture. And I just want to put as a, a kind of planting a flag here. I'm, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a good enough person to be a Christian. I don't know how to pray. I uh, I don't know anything about the Bible, although I have been reading it. And funnily enough, I did read the Quran in its entirety. But that's that's a video discussion for another one. But I am going into the the Bible fractally at many different levels, and some things I read will will lead me to to look further into the Bible. But um, anyway, Thomas Metzinger he did a speech at TED Talks, and he was speaking to Sam Harris as well, and he was saying, oh, and he's got a, a German accent. I think he's from Berlin, and he spent the first 10 minutes, you know, making fun of Trump and how bad Trump is and how Trump reminds him of Hitler. And of course, as a German guy born after the war, he has this kind of, you know, I guess, collective conscious memory of the, the horrors of the Holocaust. And uh, he was saying, oh, no, David Chalmers is a very interesting man, but uh, he basically called his theories bullshit. And he says that all consciousness is, he says that you don't have a self, there is no subjective person there, it's just a hallucination. And he says that all consciousness is, and these are his words, is integrated information processing. And again, 
at the start of this video we talked about infinite regress and okay I want to ask this Metzinger because I think he's a bit of a trickster a bit of a, a magician then say well who who is having this this uh, integrated information system being processed there still needs to be a subjective person there to experience it much like Elon Musk's um, you know, simulation theory, there still needs to be someone simulating it and there still needs to be someone at the very end, call it God, call it, I don't know, the universe, you know, it's again, it's hard and it's hard to make videos like this without people instantly switching off because we have been programmed so hard to be anti-religion, anti-spirituality to a certain extent and I was on this this uh, TV show called Conspiracy Road Trip 9-11 and if you actually watch some of the other episodes afterwards where they take some other contestants or participants they meet a scientist and they're saying oh well you know the universe is like this it's like that it's all just you know billiard balls you know cause and effect and again it's interesting I bring up squirrels there's squirrels outside my house uh, in Manchester but he says to I think it's the Muslim guy who was furrowing his brows and hmm I don't know and uh, the Muslim guy was right to be skeptical because the scientist goes look your life has no more meaning than the life of a squirrel now okay what you meant, meant to make of that we don't know the answers. Either you can meditate on the greatest thing that you can possibly imagine, and I'm going to save what that is for me for another video, or you can fall into nihilism and just become bitter and angry and see everyone with hatred and know that you're going to die and know that it's meaningless. And let's see where that gets you. I don't think it's going to get you very far. And I'll tell you just a little confession of my own uh, problems was um, I wasn't... Um, brought up in any religious or any spiritual teaching so I kind of stumbled around in the dark and grasped at things in the darkness and I grasped many wrong things and uh, so I've made many mistakes and many pitfalls and I've fallen into many holes and gone down many different paths that weren't correct but again who knows what my subjective experience is meant to mean and I am finding very profound meaning and I hope I can find some more meaning with sharing my ideas with you and again sorry for speaking so quickly I am a bit excited to be doing this again and thank you for watching it's now been 12 minutes and uh, I'll get back and uh, upload this so thank you very much God bless